I mentioned earlier today, our conversation here would not be possible without the support of our underwriters. Among them, the Joyce Foundation, who created the next session. It's called Gun Violence, Policing, and Communities. And I'm so pleased to welcome Joyce Foundation President Al Ellen Alberding, here with the mayor of Gary, Indiana, Karen Freeman Wilson. Thank you. The Joyce Foundation is based in Chicago. We focus on the Great Lakes, but one of our uh, long time and enduring concerns has been that of gun violence, and we do focus on reducing access to guns. We believe that that is one of the solutions to reducing violence in our communities. I'm so pleased to be here, so pleased to be um, able to partner with The Atlantic and, of course, to talk with the mayor. I wanted to open with a video. Um, it's a, a news story from WGN Chicago. If, if we could get the video to run, please. Deja Brookshire was just 15 years old, a resident in Gary's Miller Beach neighborhood, but shot more than seven miles away near Horace Mann Apartments at 7th and Adams. Everything we heard about the victim has been positive. Gary police say Deja was riding in the back seat of a friend's car. Her two other friends in the front seat around 9.30 Sunday night. They got to the area of 7th and Adams. They heard shots fired. The driver looked back and noticed the victim was bleeding rushed her to the hospital where she succumbed to her injuries. Those who live near the crime scene today say it's actually a nice area, though outside influences have moved in. We've been complaining. We've been trying to get something done. Police have been out here I don't know how many times, you know, and we told them the next step was going to be someone was going to get shot, and it's happened. My heart just goes out to her family, okay? I don't care what she may have been into. She did not deserve this. No one deserves this, especially at such a tender age. They haven't even begun to live, and they're dead. That's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. That's, that's heartbreaking. Thank you. I, I, we just heard Mayor Landrieu talk about the fact that mayors, it might be the best job in the world, and it's also one of the hardest jobs in the world. You're on the front lines like nobody else is. And I want to uh, take this conversation for a minute from the statistics to the personal, because we have with us um, this morning a mayor who is you know, very focused on the top-level policy issues, but also very personally engaged in the um, challenges of violence in her community of Gary, Indiana. And Mayor, I want uh, to hear a little bit from you about what this particular case meant to you and your own personal experience um, with the issue. Absolutely, Ellen, and, and thank you for the opportunity to share with you and uh, all of the folks here. But you're right. It's one thing to talk about it at a theoretical and policy level, but to uh, go and stand, as I did at Deja's funeral, and look at her family, many of whom I had gone to school with, and talk about uh, the significance of her death, not to just them individually, but to us as a community, to stand in an emergency room with a mom who is, in fact, uh, questioning her dead son because he was supposed to be at home and he had snuck out of the house. To stand at a funeral and see a mother bury two teenage sons who had been simply walking to their grandmother's house for dinner, and then to be myself with my daughter, a victim of, of gun violence, to be robbed at gunpoint. It really gives you um, a much more practical view, even more of a practical view than I had as a prosecutor, as a judge, as a public defender, to understand what violence is really doing in our community. One of the things I'm interested in is how uh, mayors learn from each other. We heard from Mayor Landrieu about doing call-ins. He feels that he's making progress in his community with that approach. 
Have you tried a similar approach? Well, one of the great opportunities I've had is to spend time in New Orleans with Mayor Landrieu and his team and to find out about the call-in process. And of course, that comes out of uh, David Kennedy's work at the John Jay College and um, to both see it from a theoretical standpoint and to sit through a call-in. We've had two in Gary. We're about, we're preparing for our third call-in and it really does have an impact on the community to say to the young men who are most likely to be involved in Violent Act, to say to them, we want to help you. We would rather that you achieve your greatest dreams and we will give you the tools, we will send you to the front of that line. But at the same time, we have to stop you from making the wrong decision. And if you make that wrong decision, we have to hold you accountable and send you to the front of that line as well. One of the things that I think has got to be really hard is that um, people in the community, when they see a certain level of violence, are likely to, or I wouldn't be surprised if they said, I don't care what the police do, they can do whatever they want to stop the violence in my neighborhood. Is that something you hear from certain folks in Gary or, or oh, not so much? Oh, that's absolutely the case. You know, so often you hear this dichotomy between the police and the community and the fact that there's a lack of trust. But not everyone in the community feels that way about the police. Not everyone in my community feels that way about the police. And to the extent that we have different types of expectations, different types of relationships, that's why I really refer to public safety as community restoration so that we can have a healthy dialogue about what it means to have police as a part of a community solution, but the solution really is about education, it's about housing, it's about job opportunities, it's about neighborhood watch and other block clubs and other things that have historically happened in communities to allow communities to really police themselves. But how do you mediate that conversation when you have folks in the community say, let the police go at it, and other folks saying we're being harassed and un unfairly, um, unfairly so? Well, what I remind people is that there is only a handful of folk who are wreaking havoc on the rest of us. And we want to not just stop that handful, but we want to provide opportunities for them. And at the same time that they have a responsibility to make their community better, whether it's cleaning up on an abandoned property that's adjacent to them, rather than waiting for the city that has limited resources to clean up those properties whether it's having tutoring programs for some of the young people who have had challenges in education. There are things that the community can do to improve its own plight. Let's close with my enduring interest, which is the availability of guns. Indiana has some of the weakest gun laws in the country. Chicago suffers from that because there is a pipeline of guns that comes straight from Indiana into our community. How do you feel in, in Gary about the role of the state and federal legislation as it pertains to easy access to guns? That's a real challenge. I mean, you can go to a gun show in, in Indiana and get whatever you need and sell it and, and pass it to whomever. And that's a real problem in the state of Indiana, but that's why the work of law enforcement is so important in the area as we look to trace guns, as we look to limit guns. And so there is an, a vital role of law enforcement in gun safety. And prosecutors and legislators? And prosecutors and legislators. I, I say gun, uh, prosecutors and law enforcement because I'm not very hopeful about the legislators in the state of Indiana. I'll just yeah, that seems to be a shared theme, <laughs> a shared theme. Well, I'd like to close uh, with, that, with that comment because I think it's a very true one. And thank you so much for the work that you do. It's a tough, tough job, and we're very proud to be able to support you in any way that we can. So, thank you. Uh, applause for Mayor Freeman. Thank you. Thank you.